find out that Mueller met with one of Trump's pollsters, a guy right. named Fabrizio. Um, right. Why did he meet with him? Well, ostensibly, he met with him to talk about what he knows about Manafort, that Manafort show, uh, shared polling data, and now we must surmise that we weren't talking about Googling a Rasmussen poll or a Quinnipiac poll. It right. was proprietary stuff that he shared with someone who certainly has connections to Russian intelligence, right. and Mueller's meeting with that pollster. Okay, so he takes it seriously. How seriously do you take it? Do you believe that this is proof of collusion? Well, I certainly don't think that any of it is proof of collusion. It's certainly suggestive, the fact that internal polling data is being turned over uh, to a Russian a businessman who supposedly What's has What's the difference the intelligence between community. proof and suggestive? Well, you need to have people explaining what those actions were and why they were taken. What was Manafort's understanding about why he was turning over that information? Mm -hmm. How did Kalamnik handle that information? What did the Russians do with that information? Did Donald Trump know about any of this. Mm. I mean, Paul Manafort had all sorts of reasons for his own personal gain to provide uh, information to people like Konstantin Kalmnik. He'd been doing business with Konstantin True. Kalmnik and Russian olig oligarchs and been paid tens of millions of dollars for years. Right. So certainly going to them and saying, look, I'm the greatest consultant in the world, and here's it. I'm, I'm running the campaign of somebody right. who's likely to win. Sure. He's feathering his own nest as well. Sure. But, you know, perhaps there was something more. I don't know. The other evidence that Bob Mueller has, mm -hmm. I was a prosecutor myself, I wouldn't want to speculate as to what he has. Mm -hmm. So it's suggestive, it's a tantalizing tidbit, but it's hardly definitive uh, proof of collusion or conspiracy of any kind between the Trump campaign, particularly, and I hear particularly you. Donald Trump I and hear you. the Russian government. So, yeah. Walter, on the side yeah. of, well, maybe it's not as big a deal as some are making it, we have, well, Mueller didn't charge him with it. And truly, his mandate is what decisions he makes in terms of prosecuting, and his declinations as well, what he declines to prosecute. But he didn't charge him with this. But then there is what I think we do know that John's leaving out. When they changed that plank in the party platform at the convention, it made no sense to us until we learned about these things. And that's not something that Manafort could have done by himself or did do by himself, because the reporting is clear. When the original plank came out, Trump people from the campaign reportedly were in the meeting, rejected it, scripted new language, and got it passed. Relevance. Chris, yeah, Chris, here's what's, here's what's important about CNN's reporting on, uh, on the Manafort uh, polling data. Um, we now have information that would suggest that coordination went both ways. That is to say, the Russian lawyer close to Vladimir Putin in the June meeting at the Trump Tower was providing information or offering to provide information uh, to the Trump campaign. And now we have the Trump campaign manager providing sensitive internal data back to the Russians. So, you know, the idea that, that there's been no collusion show uh, is getting more and more frayed. And I think we're now down to the two remaining questions. John suggested, which are, what did the president know and when did he know it? Mm. And that convention, I'm telling you, we're going to hear more about that, because that's not something that Manafort yes. could have done all by himself. All right, then, the last big headline tonight. Michael Cohen, given the green light by Mueller to talk about whatever the hell he wants to, and he is <laughs> only too happy to oblige. He's going to go before the Senate Judiciary Committee. He's going to go before the, the House Judiciary. He's going to go before the House Intel. Schiff had said it would be closed, but now Mueller gave the green light so they could both be public. Level of concern if you are the president or one of his attorneys. John. Yeah, well, I, I want to be on record that I don't agree with everything that Walter just said about the establishment of collusion. But with respect to Michael uh, Cohen, look, I would be surprised, even though Mueller has told him that he can testify, uh, whether he's going to allow uh, Cohen to speak freely about his dealings with Trump Hotel Russia. I suspect that we're going to hear an awful lot about Stormy Daniels and, and Karen McDougal uh, and perhaps other business dealings that he had when he was Donald Trump's so-called fixer. Uh, but, you know, look, we'll hear what he has to say. He's been locked down. He's testified numerous times in front of the grand jury. He's hardly an untainted witness. He's pled guilty to lying, including lying before Congress. He did not have a cooperation agreement. He is cooperating on some matters, but presumably there are other illegal conduct he knows about that he didn't feel like sharing with the prosecutors. Uh, so he's... You know, he's damaged goods, but he may have some very interesting things to say. Well, he was damaged goods until he wasn't, right? Mueller came forward and said, this guy's been credible to us. He's told the truth to us. He's been helpful to us. So, uh, you know, many men, many men have different facets to them. We'll see uh, what is said by Michael Cohen and what can be demonstrated as true. Walter right. and John, 
You guys were so helpful on a night when we needed it. Thank you both.